I greet everyone in the peace of the Lord. We're going to open our Bibles in Luke, Luke 19. Luke 19. We're going to read from verse two, Gospel according to Luke. Luke 19, verse 28. Luke 19, from verse 28. Amen. When he said this, said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he drew near to Beth Pad. Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of called Olive, Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite, opposite you, where as you enter you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it, bring it here. And if anyone asks you, Why are you losing it? Those you shall say to to him. Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were losing the the coat, the owners of it said to them, Why are you losing the coat? And they said, The Lord has need of of him. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the coat, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went away, spread their clothes on the road. Then, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if there, this should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Now as he drew near, he sought the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that might make for your peace. So all the way up to 44, verse 44. Amen. Oh! 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our brand new text that we just read show us a little bit of what was the last week of Jesus here on earth before he died. And the text shows exactly the moment in which he enters in Jerusalem for the last time. And a few texts say the, the triumphant entrance of Jesus. Because this moment highlights the fulfillment of the prophecy of God. All the word shows to us the central focus of the project of God to save man, which is Jesus. So the entire Bible, it shows, points out for the most important moment of the life of Jesus here on earth, which was his death and his resurrection. So the whole story of man and the whole story of the church is based on this day, the day when Jesus and Jesus dies, and on the third day he resurrects. So everything for us, we need to be always looking to this day. In the Old Testament, all the prophecies pointed out to Jesus, to his death and his resurrection. So all the servants that lived, these stories of the Old Testament, they all needed to look forward because the prophecy pointed out ahead. But now the church in the New Testament, we need to look behind. What, why? Because when we look behind, we will see everything that Jesus has done for us. So there is no way for the church in our days to make mistakes. Because we have here, everything is clear. Everything has been shown. It is showing all the options to us. Everything here showing how the church is supposed to do in order to get it right. And Jesus here, he enters in Jerusalem. And here we see the prophecy being fulfilled, word for word. In every action of Jesus, in every action Jesus was prophetic. Time of Jesus, Jesus' calendar, Jesus' agenda was all done in order to fulfill the prophecy of God. Everything that Jesus did whenever he rested, the infirmity, the operations, the healings, the way he spoke, the way he thought, when he waited, Jesus' gaze, everything was prophetic. Everything was in fulfillment of what was had already been prophesied. And here we see Jesus after being after passing by the house of uh, Lazarus, now in the beginning of the week, because that week was going to be the week of the Passover. Jesus needed to show himself to Israel at that week because the prophecy pointed out to that. Because on the departure of Egypt, Egypt on the 10th day, Israel, the Hebrew people had to choose a lamb. Because on the, on the 14th day was going to be Passover. So they needed to leave the lamb inside of their own house. The lamb without stain. Any physical defect with no physical problem, no disease, no stain. It had to be pure and perfect. Clean. Very well chosen. And now Jesus presents himself exactly on the week of the Passover. He enters into Jerusalem to show to Jerusalem that he was the Christ, the Savior of men. And the word tells here, when he arrived in Jerusalem, when he came down the mount, he saw Jerusalem, he says, 
to the disciples, go ahead, and then you find uh, a little donkey, untie it, and bring it here. And that's what they did. In the text that we, that we read, when we enter, you find that no man has, uh, has written on and bring it here. And that's what they did. They went there, walking without knowing exactly where, waiting for the moment in which they were going to find a little donkey there. And when they arrived, they began to pick up the, the animal. The owner always comes in, right? Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing? And they answer, oh, the master needs this donkey. We need to take it. And they allowed the donkey to be taken. And now when they brought the donkey to Jesus, Jesus rode on the donkey and he began to go towards Jerusalem. And as every action of Jesus was prophetic, we'll see that in the Word, whenever the text says that, show, uh, show to us Isaiah, Exodus, Zechariah first, Zechariah 9, 9 verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation. Lowly and riding on a donkey. A coat, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the church of Ephraim. And that shows to us exactly the prophecy being fulfilled. I thought it was wrong there. That sometimes it happens, right? The prophecy was being fulfilled, showing that Jesus, he had to come to Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And I'll ask the brethren, why a donkey? Because Jesus came in a mission of peace. He didn't come as a king, a human king, riding on a white horse riding, ready for the war, ready for the combat. No, Jesus came in a mission of peace. Jesus came to present to Israel the peace that a man needs. And Israel, they thought that they saw the Messiah, they saw Moses, a Joshua, a David, to deliver them from the hands of the Roman Empire. But Jesus came in a mission of peace. That's why he came riding on a donkey. And now there's another text, another prophecy. Riding a donkey that no man has ever ridden on. No, put on uh, Isaiah. Whoever rode on, on a horse. A lot of people, right? If you ride on a horse, the ones that are that they ride softly, good horses. But whoever had ridden a horse or a donkey that had not been uh, ridden on before, they had not been domesticated. I will advise you to do it. It's very good. Go to a farm, one of those in Brazil or here in America. Go there. I want to ride on a horse that no that has never been domesticated. You're going to do like Jesus. Try that. <laughs> Where are you going to go? You're going to break your neck? Or crooked? St stomped on? No, Jesus. Jesus, he rode on a little donkey that had never been domesticated. And there was no problem. You know why? Look at uh, the text in Isaiah, Isaiah says. Isaiah 1.3 The ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's crib. But Israel does not know my people do not consider. The prophecy had to be fulfilled. The ox knows 
its owner, and the donkey its master's crib. Why is that? Why that donkey there, when it had been brought to Jesus, the donkey simply obeyed and accepted Jesus to ride on it. Because the only rational animal is, is man, right? Man is the only animal that acts according to reason, according to intelligence, is man. God gave that to us, and the enemy used this against us. The enemy used human reason, the fact that man has the ability to think against what the project, uh, what is the project of God. Today, man is blind, like Israel was blind. Jesus was arriving in Jerusalem in order to be the king of Israel, in order to be the savior of Israel, to be the Messiah that they had been awaiting for so long. But they did not understand. They didn't comprehend why Jesus came to the world. And that's how man is today. The only rational animal is humans. It's us. We, what we had in our, our favor to be like God, what we should have used to our own benefit in order to be closer to God, in order to cause us to see the glory of God, in order to understand that man without God is, is nothing. But when man has God in their life, is everything? What God gave to us in order for us to serve Him better, in order for us to be closer to Him, we don't use it. But the enemy used this to blind us. It's like if He was putting a blind in our eyes, preventing us, preventing man from seeing the glory of God, preventing man from seeing the Creator. How many times man's reason takes away the revelation from God? The majority of times man's reason, what I think, what I imagine, what I saw, that's what I understood, I don't accept this, I don't want this, causes man not to obey what is determined, determined by God. The promise of God, the prophecy of God will be fulfilled in our lives. But one day God told you the promise, His promise in your life will be fulfilled. But you need to remove the human logic, what is human reason, what the heart speaks louder, what many times the enemy uses to confuse our mind and prevent the action of God in our life. What God has promised, He will fulfill. But it is on his own time and you need to be prepared to receive the blessing of God. You need to get out of man's time and man's rational man's time and get into God's time. That's why the donkey that had never been ridden on before accepted and allowed Jesus to ride on it because he knew who Jesus was. And that's what God wants to do with our lives. He wants us to enter into the prophetic time of God and to leave our own time and to leave what is human reason. Many times people get upset and they say this and that. Oh, that person upset at me in the church, maybe. Oh, I'm going to another place. I'm going to the other place. It has no use. Because the problem is not what is the project of God. The problem is in us. Many times we allow oh, and we hinder and sometimes we cancel the blessing of God in our lives. Now the Lord called us to be inside of a project. And the promise of God is this. We need to save man inside of this project. And there's no other way there's no, no, there's no parallel path that will allow it to come quicker or maybe later. 
we need to be inside of the project of God and answering the call of God. And that's what Israel did not understand. Because they did not see in Jesus, they didn't want Jesus that was going to lead them to heaven. They wanted someone to resolve their problems at that specific moment. And now Jesus keeps on writing, and when they saw Jesus coming towards Jerusalem, they began to glorify Him. And they began to glorify the Lord. You know why? Because it was also the prophecy of God. Now, Psalm 118, verse 20, 24, verse 24 onward. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray. Send now pro prosperity. That is He who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, and He has given us light by uh, the prophets so that Israel may glorify the Lord for the life of the, the Messiah. And that's what they did. But the ones who are, were here saying, Hosanna to the one who, uh, who comes in the name of the Lord, all of the ones, that many of them were glorifying Jesus because Jesus was arriving a few days later. With the same voice, they shouted, Crucify him. Kill him. We want the bra Barabbas. We want the robber. Why? Because they did, not, they did not understand who Jesus was. They did not understand that Jesus was the one that was come in order to show the new kingdom. And now Jesus, when he arrives, the people glorifying, the, the multitude saying, ask them to stop, ask them to stop. The, the Pharisees were saying, ask them to stop. And Jesus answered, if those, this one, do not glorify, these stones are going to start crying out. My brethren, if the church of the Lord does not perform its role, if the church of the Lord does not proclaim the return of Jesus, if the church of the Lord is, does not do what is their role as a church to speak about salvation of Jesus, does not preach the gospel, does not glorify the Lord, others are going to do it. That's why we need to be inside of our own call, doing what the Lord has given us, playing our role as a church, body of Christ. And our objective here tonight is, is for this, because one day the Lord called us removed us from the world, saved our lives. And today is reason for us to be here glorifying the Lord. Because we, can, we don't want other people to do this. We want to do this. Because uh, many reasons to glorify the Lord. And many reasons to say, Lord, I want to praise your name for the salvation of my life, for my salvation, for the salvation of my children, for the doors that you have opened, for my health, for my work, because I'm um, coming to the end of yet another year where the Lord has sustained me. It was not with my own resources. It was not because we are good professionally. If we have come to this place, it's because the Lord, the hands of the Lord has been upon us throughout this year. And that's the reason for us to glorify the Lord. And the Lord tonight is bringing you to for for you to do this. Don't allow others to glorify. You need to glorify. Oh, I don't have any reason to glorify. Yes, you do. Stop and think and you will see. If you are being victorious this year, it is because the Lord has been with you. How many homes have been destroyed? How many lost family members this year? How many lost their jobs? How many are in hospitals? But you're here. Breathing. Oh, but I'm, I'm, I'm limping, but doesn't matter. The Lord is with you. The Lord has sustained you. Glorify the Lord. Open up your lips and give Him glory to God. You know why? Because it's good to glorify the Lord. And the Lord Jesus now, He cries upon Israel. 
when he sees Jerusalem, he cries because he knew what was about to happen. He knew the rejection. He knew what was uh, on the heart of people. Jesus knew exactly what the judgment that was going to come upon Jerusalem. And he says, Lord, days are going to come upon you where your enemies are going to surround you with trenches and going to siege you and you surround it from every side. And you are going to... They are not going to allow stone upon stone to be there because you didn't know the moment of your visitation. Jesus dies and 38 years later, more or less, Jerusalem is invaded and was sieged by two year, for two years um, Emperor Titus, Titus and his men they entered into Jerusalem, they destroyed the temple and Jerusalem was never the same again because the prophecy of God is fulfilled in man's life because they didn't know the day of the visitation they did not see who Jesus was, they did not understand, they did not accept who Jesus was. My brethren, today we are here, 2,000 years later, and we are here tonight glorifying the Lord, because one day the Lord has been able to reach us. The day of the Lord one day came to us, and we have been visited by the Holy Spirit of God. And every day we are being visited by the same Spirit. And every day we are blessed by this same God. You know why? Because today we are in the presence of, God, of a God that speaks and fulfills His promises. Today we are witnesses of the power of God. Today the Church of the Lord, not not the Church, but a people, small people spread all over the world. A few from other denominations. They know the glory of God. And they live under the powerful hands of the same God that took the people from Egypt, the same God that sustained Israel 40 years in the desert, the same God that throughout the history of the Bible preserved the faithful people of God. And the same visitation is what causes us to go back every day to the presence of the Lord. Because it is out of gratitude that we are here. We're not here because we want a Jesus for this life, a Jesus that is going to bring healing, prosperity, or a Jesus that is going to bring any good, any material goods to us. No. What we want is the owner of the miracle. We want the one is that is the owner of the blessing. We don't want the blessing only. We want the owner of the blessing. We want to be beside the one who is our Savior. And tonight is a night of your opportunity. You may be coming to yet another year, to the end of uh, another year. I don't know how your year was. I don't know if you had defeats or victories. I don't know. I cannot say. From my point of view, everything, everybody looks nice. Everybody seems to be okay. But the Lord knows you. The one who saw you throughout, your, throughout this year. He, he saw your trials. He saw your difficulties. He saw the battles that you have to fight. But the same God was the one who visited you. It's the same God that during the night or during the day, whatever you prayed for him, whatever, whenever you, you nail down, he is the one who collected your tears. Because the day of the visitation of the Lord is this, is the day when, in which he brings comfort, uh, the day in which he brings consolation, and he brings the assurance that we are not being deceived, that we are not only living aimlessly, we are here because the Lord is with us. If you are not experiencing this, my brother and sister, you can still. There are still few, a few days to the end of this year. You can finish this day, this year saying, this year saying, 
this year I've been visited by God, and we can begin the new year, the, new, the year 2020, saying this is a year in which God's going to take care of everything that I have. We're going to have a year of victories because I know that the, my Redeemer lives. Glory to God. We're going to hear a song of praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I invite the church to stand up. Kind of a word of glorification to the Lord. I want to praise you because you speak every day to our hearts. Give us deliverance. Take care of our life. We praise you because we are here. And it's because you have taken care of our life. You know, Lord, there is something in one of days to happen. 
that is, which is our life with you in eternity. We praise you for everything that I have done in our lives in the name of Jesus. My brethren, Jesus came to the world in order to bring life to, to bring peace to man. Jerusalem, if you only knew on this day what is your peace that belongs to you, what man needs the most is peace, is tranquility. And this peace he will only find in Jesus. He's not going to be with material gift, material goods, or fortune, none of it can fill the emptiness of a man's heart. The only thing that eliminates this emptiness, this lack of being complete, is when Jesus enters into man's heart and make dwelling there. That's why Jesus, when he comes to appear to the disciples of the resurrection, he says, Peace be with you. And that's the peace that we as a church, our mission as a church is this, that you leave this place with this peace, and that you may carry this peace to your own home, to your environment work, whatever you go, that you may be a blessing, whatever you are, and you will only be able to reach this in Jesus. He's not becoming the member of the church or church B A or B. No, that does not resolve anything. The solution is to accept Jesus as the Messiah, as Christ, the one who is going to save your life and bring you to dwell eternally in God's presence. Amen. The Lord has spoken here tonight. There is a man who entered here. The enemy does with him whatever he wants. Brings him there, back and forth, because he is at the mercy of the enemy. He is completely blind, without any direction. He is completely lost. Surely the enemy is using his human reason, causing you to think too much, question too much, but tonight you need to reproach this in your life. This feeling of lost, this feeling of emptiness, of defeat. You need to reproach this in the name of Jesus. And you will leave this place renewed in the presence of the Lord. Because the only one that can control our lives is Jesus. And He wants to be the pilot of your life. He wants to cause you to enter into a path. This path will lead you to salvation. Amen.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Blessed and exalted be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Receive, Lord, at this moment, the adoration of your church, especially because on this service, your spirit was able to visit our te bendizemos, Senhor, pela nossa certeza. We praise you, Lord, for our guarantee that our names are written in the book of life. We praise you, Lord, because our call, because we know that one day, Maranatha, will be fulfilled in our lives. We praise you, Lord, for the ministration of your angels in our behalf, for your angels walking amongst us. We praise the Lord because if we have come to this point it's because you have sustained us. And now in a single voice we want to place our, our gratitude and ask that you may receive our praise and our service and adoration to your name and that we may have uh, the, uh, an end of year completely in your presence. Never allow us to falter, Lord. Never allow us to remove the, the hinder the operation of the of your Holy Spirit in our lives. But that we may always be giving appropriate worth to what you have given us, Lord. Take us home in peace and separate that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. If anybody desire a prayer, an assistance, we are here at your disposal. Sometimes you may think, oh, I'm going to think. Don't think. Ask for the prayer. Whoever thinks too much makes too many mistakes. So tonight, you came here. The Lord brought you here in order for you to receive a blessing that the Lord has reserved, set aside for your life. This coming Tuesday, we are not going to have service. Our service is going to be on Wednesday at 8 p.m. It's going to be a message about Christmas. It's going to be brought and once again, we're going to be here glorifying the Lord for this great gift that the Lord has given us, which is Jesus. So the children, the church, we'll all be here. So once again, we can praise the name of the Lord and to all the peace of the Lord.